And we're back on another edition of the City Beat TV Magazine podcast. And you can reach us at uh, thecitybeatmagazine.com. And right now, we have the splendid pleasure to talk to a lovely young lady who's doing a lot of things in the music and entertainment business. So go, her name is Whittington Steele. And Whittington, first and foremost, I want to welcome you to City Beat TV. Thank you for the welcome. I am so honored and happy to be here with you, Tony. I am. First and foremost, uh, you have um, some music out and uh, we're going to talk about some of your future endeavors a little later. But one of the things I would like to ask you is what do you think or how do you feel when you're compared to so many other amazing artists? Um, you know, so it's like Anita Baker is one that comes to mind. But yeah. I listen to your music till the time. So there, here's the thing with that. It is such a compliment, right? They yes. are phenomenal. So the fact that anyone would even put me in that category, I'm honored. Let me first say that. I'm, I'm honored. However, sometimes people will think that you are trying to emulate that sound. And then if you fall short to what they're expecting because of that artist, then, then what do you have? So I, I always remind people, um, the similarities are there, especially with Phyllis Hyman and myself. I can't explain it. It is not on purpose. Um, it is truly coincidental. Now I have performed a lot of her music. Sure. People come up to me and boo-hooing. I mean, Tony, tears. And I say, please tell me my music didn't do that to you. I, I don't want to do that to you. They say, no, it's just, I feel like she's here. I feel like I feel her presence and um, you don't know how comforting it was and you're keeping her alive in a sense. And, and so I get it, I get it, but I really want people to hear the Whittington still stylings. One of the other things you mentioned about, you know, the different dimensions in the song, the, uh, what is it called? Uh, 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 you got to uh, uh, know what to do. That wasn't going to be released. Um, it was just, I wanted to see if I could do something that was non-valid, right? In a house type form. Okay. I had to have it slow down a little because I always said, I, I speak slow. I know that um, I tried, I practiced, believe it or not, in uh, speaking fast. I practiced to myself. With the house song, I said, I wonder if I could do it. I can't do it. I know I can't do it because I want to sing ballads that let me let me sing and and you know really express, right? And let you hear the quality of my voices. I thought that was the only way you could hear it is if I'm I'm slow with it and deliver it. You know what I mean? Oh, so <laughs> when it got time to do, you better know what to do. I love the beat and I wrote the song in the car on the way to the studio. And then I think we had to circle back and I, I stopped at my hotel and I, I left the song. It wasn't like I could remember, oh yeah, I had this for a while, I've been practicing it. And it was really, I didn't plan on recording it that day either, but my flight was um, delayed twice. Mm. And I, I kept trying to stay away from that song, right? I was scared. <laughs> and my engineer, who is just a musical genius, uh, Jimmy Brown out of North Carolina, he said, um, oh, if flight was delayed, we'll, we'll, we can do the house song. Oh, no, 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 no. <coughs> no, no, we need to do that. Oh, well, we can't do it. I left the, I left the folder back at the hotel and then, um, Whittington, you don't need those words. Get up there and sing the song. I said, okay, let's give it a shot. So what you hear, Tony, is all freestyle. That's not even what I wrote. That's, that's not even what I wrote. And so once I got it back from him, I called a good friend, another musical genius, Demetrius Richardson, whom I'm hoping you're going to hear on one of my tracks soon. So. I called him up and I said, I, I got to let you hear this song. Um, 
I don't know. I don't think I'm going to release it. And he said, why? I said, because it's, it's something, something's missing. And he said, let me tell you what's missing. You're a great songwriter. You write songs that tell a story, have a hook and a beautiful closing. I said, well, thank you. He said, with house music, you don't need that. You just need a, a, a good beat and a good hook. And that's what you got with it to go with it. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, I'm good with that. It made sense. I never recorded a house song before, so I didn't know, but that made perfect sense. I was like, oh my God, thank you. So I released it. Let's get into your merch. Tell me a little bit about that whole uh, journey. Well, I've loved fashion forever. Like I remember taking a needle and thread and sewing, you know, cutting up pieces of fabric and trying not to get caught with fabric. You know, it wasn't like I went to the store and bought yard. So I would find <laughs> fabric <laughs> and cut it up and sew clothes for my doll babies, right? <laughs> and take straight pins and bend them up in a way and stick them in the ears of dolls. I just always had that, right? Just want to do something. And I think most little girls are like that. Yeah, and right. so um, I used to sit and draw bottles. I was older, but I would sit and draw bottles of fragrances and names of what I wanted. I wanted a fragrance line. I used to draw shoes. These wow. are things when, that's why we should pay attention to our children. Yes. When they do things like that, right. you, you need to nurture that. You need to pour into that. Absolutely. And even though I didn't have anyone taking those drawings or anything away from me, I didn't have anyone really paying attention to that. That, that wasn't serious stuff, you know what right. I mean? When you have a serious household, the serious things was what mattered and that wasn't a serious thing. I, they could have considered me as just doodling. And then I used to be like that big, like like <coughs> a twig, right? Real, real, real skinny, not that anymore. And so I used to want to model. And when people would ask me what I wanted to be, I wanted to be a part-time lawyer mm. and a part-time model. And it's sad, but back then, because I don't know if it was a color thing, or because of how women of color are just have a, a natural figure and we're not sticks. And although I was a size zero, I still had a natural figure okay, and was often told without being told I was too big, I wasn't right for it. And then you'd see the one that went in there didn't look like me. And then they were even thinner than I was. And it was like, oh my God, I would. I would just have to starve myself to death. And um, I think I tried to like get thinner and, and, and it just wasn't worth it. It really wasn't worth it. It just didn't seem like it was gonna happen. And I said, let me get off of this modeling kick. So every now and again, I might be able to go somewhere and do something. Um, somebody wanna take pictures, things like that. But a full blown like runway opportunity I, I hadn't received and um, it made me sad because I'm 5'10 and a half and I wear heels. Mm. So, yes. So I was thin and I was tall and oh, it was like, nice. why can't they see that, you know, and not not bad on the eye. When I was younger, I wasn't bad on the eye. I just didn't understand. But um, that's when something said, you know, maybe, maybe that way, that route isn't the way. So I just had to accept that. But yeah, I've always wanted to dilly dally in fashion and fragrance. Um, and then to, to draw these things. And then, you know, I have my vision board and I have all these things on my vision board and then some. So it's like to see those things come to life. I was sitting and I started searching for um, companies to kind of partner with you know i really didn't know how to go about that and i just started searching and you know when you put it out there tony okay the next thing you know i had two emails 
-hmm. I researched two companies mm -hmm. and one company um, I didn't care for the reviews all that much um, and then the other company was on the money the other mm -hmm. company was it, it did things the right way it was yeah. professional yeah. and they handled business and I'm a business person so far uh, I made the right choice, especially with the fragrance line. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I I couldn't have asked for a better company to create my fragrance. I wanted a unisex fragrance. I, I knew, I sat and I said, I know I want this to be for men and women. How do I do that? So I had to read through all of the fragrances, all of the blends the company had, right? And I know enough. So years back, I wanted to be able to go to a chemist and actually create my fragrance. I wanted to do that like 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. That didn't happen. And then COVID came, right? Almost four years now. Right. And, um, and I said, am I going to be able to do this? And then ran across this company, Set Crafters. So they said they work with you. They'll actually, you don't have to go there. They'll send you. Um, the fragrance that you create and they'll send it back and forth until they get it right. Like you just keep going until you get what you want. I said, I'm not going to have to do that. I'm going to do it one time, just like in the studio. And we're going to get it on first take. I went through and I, and I looked at the fragrances very carefully. And from what I know about them, I said, if I blend this with this and this, and this everybody men and women love this and this that should be good and if the chemist balance it just right i believe you can't go wrong it's gonna smell good you can't go wrong it's gonna smell good and and at first i thought it might i honestly thought it might end up coming out a little masculine and so um i just added certain things that would try to cancel that out they had no idea i was trying to make a unisex fragrance that's the thing they didn't know so i put those things together couldn't wait to get it i got it and tony oh god i cried i cried you could smell it before you even open up the box i cried because the packaging was beautiful. It comes in these satin white bags with a thank you card. It's a nice size bottle. And they put a thank you card in there, which is so sweet from the two sisters that run the company. I have something for everyone. When you think about my brand, I mean, a song is what, a dollar, two dollars? To send on a good song that's over six minutes long. You want to step it up and get a, a, a fragrance, which it's not just about the fragrance. Yes, it is a great experience. But yes, you are helping an independent artist who is working from the ground floor. Right. No corporation behind me at okay. all. all right. I own every single song, every master. I write everything myself. When I say I own everything, I truly own everything when it comes to the music. But I have to mention the we fact that indie artists don't get their just do and i'm not just talking about me because i'm i'm gonna do what i'm supposed to do regardless right it's just like there's so much talent out there on the indie artist level and they're only indie because they don't have the big guys behind them but there are so many people who won't even give them a shot they're just stuck on those ones that the media tells you to like they're just been brainwashed listen to this artist only listen to that artist this is the this is the top r b this is the grammy winner this is and if you would just open your ears and seek the indie artist out surprised what you find there you have it this is my new friend this is whittington still definitely look her up purchase her music and check out her merchandise i'm telling you she is a true gem and we'll be talking to her again sometime soon so much tony oh my pleasure dear so till next time we'll see you again on another edition of the city beat magazine have a good night just ain't right come on and let me love
love you, baby, right here, right.